I've got my Nordstrom chinos on. They're filthy. They are hemmed too high. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Blackbird is a company out of India that is making hand welted dress shoes for $141, which is genuinely incredible. Now, we'll talk about the shoes or whatever this video is about in a second, but first and way more importantly, where do you think the name Blackbird comes from? If you're anything like me, you have poetic images in your head of a small black bird perched elegantly upon a branch. Symbolism and allusion to mystery, grace, the unknown, perhaps some reference to the intelligence and sophistication of crows, perhaps a reference to some event or experience deeply personal to the founders themselves. It was named after their other company, Blackbird Footwear Co., which in turn was named after the SR-71. Yes, that Blackbird. The American war machine created by Lockheed Martin in 1966. I'm sorry, what? You named your shoe company after the SR-71? That is the most unhinged thing I've heard all week. And I love it. Dress well, brought to you by Raytheon. The shoes are good, okay? The quality leaves a bit to be desired. I have seen these in person. I've seen all these shoes in person. And you can even just tell from the website pictures that these shoes are lacking the sort of refinement that we'll see from the other options on this list. The lasts, which are the shapes of the shoes themselves, are pretty basic English-inspired lasts, which is to say they are straightforward, inoffensive, standard-looking dress shoes. These are great options for someone who wants just like a daily walker shoe that they also want to be Goodyear Welt, doesn't need to look like super sharp, but also does doesn't cause anxiety to use because they're like $500, right? These are hand welted, okay? And I'm not gonna get into the specifics of what hand welted means, but I will leave a link below for those interested. But fundamentally, you're probably asking yourself like, well, everyone tells me I should get Goodyear welted shoes. Like how does hand welted compare? People buy Goodyear welted shoes for three main reasons. One is they have cork. The second is that they are resolvable, and then that water won't get inside of them. So hand welting will do all of these qualities and therefore are effectively the same. Now that all said, these are truly amazing for the price. I don't know of anybody else in the international market that offers a solid Goodyear welted construction shoe for under $150 but I do know of one company that does it for under two. Our next company is not named after the pinnacle icon of the post-war American military industrial complex, and that is because, my friends, our next company is Meerman, which sounds more like a duck to me than a war machine. So you've got your Mallard duck and you've got your Meerman duck. I don't know, am I, am I just mentally ill? $195 is the price of these Goodyear welted shoes designed by this Spanish company and manufactured in China. Meerman's been around for a while. They've actually been known to have pretty rough customer service issues in the past, but I think they're probably past that, especially now that they have a store in Manhattan. They've also been known for using stiffer leathers that require a longer break-in period. Nothing too extreme and also kind of hit or miss, like some people don't have that issue at all, but ultimately, pretty reasonable sacrifice for this price point. Again, pretty basic lasts here, standard designs. That'll be a common theme until we get to our last couple brands on the list. The standout quality about these that really makes them special though is the closed channel sole. This process is not just a mark of craftsmanship, but also serves the very important function of protecting the sole stitch. Literally the most important stitch holding the whole shoe together. Typically you don't see this until you get above $350, $400. So to have it below two is pretty darn cool. Between the American storefront and the price, I would consider Meerman the second best option for first time buyers. And that is because the best option for first timers is Beckett Simonon, which I'm pretty sure is the name of that short dude with the hair in Pirates of the Caribbean. All right, I'm done, I'm done with the name gimmick jokes. Sorry. This American company that manufactures in Bogota, Colombia features that same exceptional, gratuitous, Amazon-inspired customer service and refund policy that we have all come to know and love here in the US. A risk-free purchase is what makes us the best option for first-time buyers who may not be as dialed in to what they want in terms of sizing, color, material, comfort, etc. And I have a whole review on them. 
check it out. These are Blake Stitch shoes. Oh my God, but everyone says to buy Goodyear Weld. Look, Goodyear Weld is better than Blake, but not by the order of magnitude that you would think from reading what people write about it on Reddit. I talk more about it in the review. I'll make a video on it at some point. At this price, it really doesn't matter. But actually it does matter because Blake Stitch is substantially cheaper to make, which means Beckett Simonon's Blake Stitch shoes have higher quality craftsmanship, details, and materials than most other Goodyear welted shoes around this price, including Meerman and Blackbird. Heel wheeling, color burnishing, full leather heel stack, suede heel counter, tight, refined stitching, the list goes on. They also use a pretty soft leather and are very comfortable straight out the box. And while they are still that standard basic American style last, they do have some notable qualities like bulbous heels and sophisticated toe caps. I personally have actually been a client of Beckett Simonon even before I had dressed well or have had a relationship with them. My favorite product in their entire line is the Cohen Loafers. I think they look great, they're super comfy, like cheap enough that I can wear them every day and not worry too much about them. To be fair though, the other companies on this list around $200 are probably going to be a better value in terms of just materials and construction if those are your priorities. My personal opinion, since the voices in my head are asking me for it, my primary concerns with a dress shoe are first and foremost that it looks good and is comfortable. After that, if it's hand weld, Goodyear weld, leather heel stiffener, Papa Bless. Skolix is a Swedish company and their dress shoes are made in Mallorca, Spain. Super reputable area of the world, known for making high quality dress shoes for companies like Carmina, TLB Mallorca, and Yanko. Straightforward Goodyear welted shoes. The reason they're here and the most notable quality about them is that they have rubber city soles. Blackbird doesn't offer rubber soles. Beckett Simonon only has them on some models. Meerman does carry some rubber options, though honestly, I'm including Skolix here because I know they're a reputable company. I've seen their shoes in person. And while most of my audience is in the US, I always like to include extra options just in case for my non US audience, shipping from Sweden happens to be something that works better for them. Oh my God, Bridlin! People have asked me to talk about it. I'm here to talk about it. This is probably the most innovative, the most exciting company on this list. Hello. You see, guys, this channel is not quite big enough to get a sponsorship from any company that isn't a child labor trinket company. And as much as I love child labor, I am not endorsing it on the channel. I run a professional show here, right? And what that means is that this is my time to beg you for likes and subscribes. And use my affiliate links. If you decide to buy one of these products, which you don't have to. Ow, God, that hurts so bad. Oh, I wanted to, uh. God. If you found this video helpful, which you might not, and if you want to support the creation of more videos like it, you can use those links. And if you do, I love you, 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 I love you. Non-gemmed channeled insoles means a thicker insole with no gemming. It's this white canvas rib, it's super stiff, makes the insole stiff. The insole will provide a little more padding because it's thicker and be more flexible, meaning it will break in faster. 3D last attachment means that the shoe is, when it's lasted, it, the leather is basically stretched less so that it will deform less over time. There's less risk of that happening. It more, has more structural integrity. These are not things that any other company is doing even remotely close to this price range. And they actually make a difference. True innovation that isn't just creating new types of plastic and foam and calling it proprietary comfort technology. I'm sorry, I'm back on my Vyvanse. $250 for their mainline Oxfords. Now there is a lot to say about these shoes, but for me personally, what does it is the closed channel sole. The obvious comparison here is Meerman, but because of how Bridlin is constructed with a thicker, more flexible leather insole, they will be more comfortable than Meerman. I've also found that Bridlin's craftsmanship is a bit more fine, the cleanliness of the stitching and joinery. The last design is a bit more sophisticated with more precise curvature, and the leather is of a bit higher quality, I've found. If you're on a tight budget, Meerman is great, but for just a few extra bucks, Bridlin is definitely a better value. Free shipping's pretty dope too. CNES is out of Singapore and they make their shoes in Vietnam. 266 plus shipping. To be honest, I'm not crazy about the last design. The toes look kind of like M&Ms, they're like 
a little too round. It was like, I don't know, childproof bumpers or something. It's like very like Fisher Price chic. I don't know, is that mean? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's just my personal preference though. Ultimately, the craftsmanship is pretty tight on these. I have seen them in person and they are very well-made shoes and the sole work is incredible. Closed channel burnished to a beautiful semi-gloss, their logo stamped on, which given the intricacy of the stamp, I would consider it more of a decoration than just a normal logo stamp. And then this beautiful dyed fiddleback waist, which refers to this ridge, a common feature on bespoke shoes. CNS probably creates this using some kind of shortcut method that utilizes like a shank or an insert, not actually the way it's done bespoke, but it looks great nonetheless. If you want to know how this is actually done in the bespoke process, I'll leave a link to a video below, basically shows you everything. Last, but most certainly not least, my friends, is Carlos Santos. These shoes are made in Portugal and can be bought from Swedish specialty retailer, The Noble Shoe, which is run by Kostas Mandelares, who is a shoemaker himself. He's got a YouTube channel. It's got super great information. If you wanna know basically everything about shoes, go check them out. These shoes retail for 350 to 370, but if you use my code right here, you get an extra 10% off. This is really where we enter the realm of dress shoes with a capital D. Not only is the construction and leather quality great on these, but now we are talking about far more slim, elegant, and unique last design, which is really what you're buying a shoe for once you get into this upper echelon of like four or $500 plus shoes. But then on top of that, the most note, uh, what is, oh. Did a bug just fly in my eye? Ugh. But then on top of that, the most notable quality about these shoes is the patina. Beckett Simonon has light color burnishing, but this is where we get full blown color work on the shoes, which creates these beautiful, but still subtle colorways. These shoes could already pass for around $300 just given the materials and construction themselves, but given that they have these beautiful patinas and you don't typically see patinas on shoes until you get to like above $350, $400, even $450, and to patina existing shoes costs already between $150 and $200, these are a steal if you're into patinas. I personally love the Chelsea's. I'm supposed to be getting them soon for review. If I haven't by the time I make this video, I'll have B-roll of them. They're super cool. I love the patina on it because it's super subtle. Like patinas, you might say, oh, well, I've seen shoes under, uh, you know, $200 of the patinas. And it's like, yeah, some will have them. Sometimes it's kind of more like an acrylic you paint. It's not a true patina, everything. like a dye. This Sometimes it's also just like not now. even that, it doesn't look that this, good. Sometimes it's just like weird and kind of gaudy. Okay. And, it this doesn't have like the subtlety now. or the complexity that makes a good patina good. Now, that all said, they do have an open channel sole and you all know how I feel about that. But ultimately, even though we've seen some exceptional examples in this video, broadly, it is reasonable to have an open channel sole at this price point. Your shoe will still last a pretty good time, even without a closed channel. But I've got strong feelings about it. I'm gonna complain about it. This is me complaining about it. I love you all so much. I'll see you soon. Here's another video.